all I see in the news is kids that shoot and abuse. Nations at odds over borders and gods, or stories of you that shoot up and use. Dads with their toys, neglecting their boys, and moms with their curls. What are we teaching our girls? The media's eyes grow hollow and cold, as prophets soar from the horrors they've told. Every night at six from behind a tall desk, teaching me to fear that or fear this. I listen in fear to the stories I'm told. Oh, how I wish I could learn to fear less. But from deep inside, not of my bones or my flesh, a still small voice calming my worry and stress. It says to me, fear not, for I've got all of this. Trust in me, my child, and live. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Great to see everybody here today. Thank you so much for joining us. I feel like I have a special word of encouragement uh, for all of us as we talk about uh, being fearless, having less fear in our lives, and uh, we need a little bit more faith, amen, and confidence. And uh, uh, that's what I want to talk to you about today is being fearless. I mean, not stupid, not foolish, not unwise, not unaware, but fear. Less. Okay, anybody with me this morning? Okay, so maybe today you're, you're listening to this message, you're here in this room, or you're tuning in by way of uh, YouTube, and maybe you're experiencing some fear in this time of what's happening in our culture, or maybe that you have a loved one, or, or a friend, or a neighbor, or a co-worker who's kind of struggling and, and in fear a little bit more than they should be, but fear, honestly, it's, it's one of the most shared emotions that we have here in this, in this building. In times like this, we can begin to live our lives. If we're not careful, we can be lit, begin to live our lives with this sense of uneasiness. Or like we're troubled. Or, or like just tense and edgy. And uh, like things are spinning out of control. And, and we're just not comfortable with that. We don't like that feeling. Fear, if we're not careful, can grip us. It can paralyze us. It can stop us from thriving, and we can just begin to live in fear. And we can begin to just live scared. I don't want to live that way, and I don't think the Scripture encourages us to live that way, no matter what's going on in our world. But sometimes we may find ourselves struggling a bit, and we're scared of the coronavirus, or we're scared of what the what chaos it may cause in our world and in our society. We're scared of the Chinese. We're scared of President Trump, or Joe, or uh, who's the other guy, Bernie. We're, or we're scared of the stock market doing this or that, and we're scared of running out of money. We're scared that uh, we might be sick, or we might be left alone, or we might face death. We're, we're just scared sometimes. And I know for many people here today, and maybe tuning in by way of online, uh, we, this can be a scary time, but I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you with God's word that yes, we should be wise. Yes, we should be diligent. Yes, we should be smart, wash our hands and take care of things. But should we live in fear? Never. Absolutely not. Never. And that's what I want to encourage us here today is that if, if, if we've allowed that fear to creep in or perhaps we know somebody that we need to encourage, hey, believe in God. Believe, give your life to Jesus Christ. He is the king of over all. He's the king forever. He's the one who has all authority and all power. And guess what? You don't have to fear. You don't have to live Scared. And I wanted you, want you to write this down if you're taking notes with me. I want you to do two things this morning as we think about God's word. Number one, reject the spirit of fear. And number two, embrace the spirit of God. Amen? We want to reject the spirit of fear. We're going to unpack this in just a few moments. But we want to embrace the spirit of God. Let me introduce you to a person in the Bible named Timothy. Timothy was a young minister. He was being mentored by Paul, the apostle, an, an amazing church planter. And, and Paul had a lot of confidence in Timothy. 
In fact, he sent Timothy to pastor a church in a city called Ephesus that was facing a lot of difficulty back then in that day. But it seems that Timothy may have been faltering a little, struggling a little. And he was, he was given in to this, this timidity or this, this fear, and he was struggling with that. Why would he be struggling with that? Number, number one, his mentor Paul had just been arrested and thrown into jail. And now Paul was like a rock in his life. He was like a strong spiritual father, and now Paul was unavailable. He felt alone. And, and it seemed that Timothy, being young, and Christians in this, in this church in Ephesus were not responding to his authority. In, in other words, some of the leaders of the church didn't really respect Timothy all that much. And then there was the problem of false teachers trying to creep into the local church. And then there's the problem of persecution against Christians. So was there a reason for Timothy to kind of falter a little bit and begin to live in a little bit of timidity and fear? Yeah, probably so. But the Apostle Paul comes along and he writes, a, writes these letters. They're called the books of First and Second Timothy. And Paul gives Timothy some stark encouragement. And I think they're not only applicable to what Timothy needed at that time, they're also fresh words from God for us. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to put this up on the screen as well. But we're going to look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, starting in verse 6. This is what the Apostle Paul says to young Timothy. He says, for this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Verse 7. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power and love and self-discipline. Going on in verse 8, it says, So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy life. Not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. And this grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus. Look at these words. Who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Amen. Verse 11. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and, and an apostle and a teacher. And that is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame, because I know whom I have believed. And I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. <clears throat> what powerful words from the apostle, the great spiritual father to this young Timothy who was struggling, who may have been faltering. But I want us to zero in on this verse 7. I want us to read it. Some of us may have memorized this verse, uh, even from the New King James Version or another version of the Bible. This is where I learned it in the New King James. It says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. I love what it says even in the Amplified Version of the Bible. It says this in verse 7. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment and personal discipline, abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self control. See, the Apostle Paul saw that Timothy was struggling with timidity, and Timothy knew that he felt this fear in his life, but God wanted Timothy to know that fear was not from God. 
Fear was absolutely not from God. He needed to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God was not the one giving him this spirit of fear. And if you think about it, guys, the spirit of fear can be like a constant companion, you know, like the, uh, uh, the thing sitting on your shoulder, whispering lies and deception to you and communicating all the what ifs and all the worst case scenario and what now and just life is out of control and, and it's just all overwhelming. The spirit of fear can relentlessly question God's love. Does he really love us? That spirit of fear can, can relentlessly question God's power. Is anything really too hard for God? That spirit of fear can make us question God's sovereignty. Does he really work all things together for the good of those who love him? And listen, the only way to defeat a spirit is with the opposite spirit. I want you to catch that this morning because instead of a spirit of fear, Jesus wants to fill us and give us the spirit of God. That spirit of power, that spirit of love, that spirit that gives us a sound mind. The Holy Spirit wants to lead us, wants to guide us, wants to pour out God's love on us, wants to empower us. The Holy Spirit wants to shape us to look more like Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit wants to transform us from the inside out. The Holy Spirit wants to communicate the deep truths of God to our spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to give us supernatural power so that we can be light in this dark world. You see, the spirit of fear wants to hold you captive. It wants to paralyze you, wants to hold you down, weigh you down, and stop you. But the Spirit of God wants to set us free through the power of the Word of God, which is the truth. Am I preaching okay this morning? All right. So to deal with the fears in our lives, we need to first recognize this. Number one, fear is not from God is absolutely not from God. And number two, if we want to deal with fear, it's understanding the spirit that God has given us. God has given us the spirit of power and of love and a sound mind. Listen, I was thinking about this verse, just meditating on it this week and thinking about how God has given us the spirit of power. You know, when we do His work, proclaiming His word, representing his kingdom we have all the power we need in the world behind us and supporting us and going before us we are absolutely safe and secure in the powerful hands of God that Greek word for power is actually dunamis it's used about 120 times in the New Testament and the word means strength or power or ability and, and not just that but dunamis is, is not just any power. No, it is the explosive, miraculous power of the living God. The power of God means that God lacks nothing. He needs nothing. He depends on nothing. And nothing is too difficult for our God. That when He takes action, it is overwhelming. It is overpowering. It is irresistible. And it is final. We do not live the Christian life in our own power, but in His power. We don't do what we do out of our own strength, but we do it out of His strength. Listen to what Scripture says in Ephesians chapter 1. The Apostle Paul again says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which He has called you, the riches of His glorious inheritance in His holy people. Look at these words. And His incomparably great power for us who believe. He goes on to say, that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, 
power and dominion and every name that is invoked not only in the present age but also in the one to come go ahead and praise God in verse 22 and God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for that church and which, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Don't you want to live in the reality and in the power of that verse right there? What does it mean? It's that, it's that power that raised Jesus Christ up from the dead. That power which defied all odds, defied all governments, defied all man's plans, defied all nature and natural things. defied all of Satan's plan, that power, that greatness of power is working on our behalves. I just want to encourage you this morning, the exalted Jesus can put your fears under his feet. And your fears don't have to rule because Jesus rules it all. Jesus rules it all. God has not only given us a, a, the spirit of power, but also of love. Everybody say love. Agape love is that love that comes from God. And God's love isn't sentimental. It doesn't fade. It doesn't go like this. It isn't wishy-washy. It is part of his character. It is part of who he is. God loves from an outpouring of who he is. His love is undeserved and gracious and sacrificial and God's love expels the spirit of fear and I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ And to know this love that surpasses all knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Do you hear what the Apostle Paul is saying? And also John says it in 1 John chapter 4. I love this. It says, where God's love is, there is no fear. Because God's perfect love drives out fear. Every expression of Jesus is love. Every word of Jesus is love. Every action of Jesus is love. And when we walk in the power of God's love, it will cast out all fear. And God has not only given us that spirit of power and love, but also a sound mind. That Greek word here, I'm not going to try to say it, but it conveys this idea of calm peace, self-controlled mind, in contrast to the panic and confusion and chaos that comes with the spirit of fear. Followers of Jesus who are indwelled and empowered by the Holy Spirit are constantly learning this, this joyful journey of how to live from a sound mind, self-controlled self-discipline a self-controlled person is clear-headed clear-eyed free from wild fluctuations of thinking and feeling and ideas the self-controlled person makes decisions that are thoughtful and that are wise the self-controlled person does not live for the moment but considers the truth before taking action how many of you need to grow in a, in a sound mind, self-discipline, self-controlled mind, your way of thinking? I love what Proverbs 16 says. Better a patient person. Anybody like to be patient? Better a patient person than a warrior. One with self-control than one who takes a city. 
So here's the main point of everything I want to share today. Here's like the big idea. If you tuned out, I just want you to tune right back in for this. Okay, jot this down if you're taking notes. This is what I want you to get. The big truth for your life today is this. Do not accept what God has not given. Rather, humbly receive and, and walk in what he has. He has not given us a spirit of, so don't accept it. But he has given us the spirit of love and power and a sound mind. Embrace it and walk in it every single day. Paul wrote this to Timothy because being fearless absolutely matters. It's important. Why? Because without it, we can't fulfill what God has called us to do. We can't be the church that thrives. God's purpose for us is more than being entertained. God's purpose for us is more than just making money or being comfortable. It is about each of us using the gifts that he has given us to make a difference in this world. And fear and timidity and being cowardice can hinder us. But we're not going to let it. Amen? We're not going to let it. God wants us to be using our gifts. God wants us to be giving, tithing our offerings. God wants us to be serving if we're here at the church or if we're out in our community or in our family. God wants us to shine his light to other people. And God wants each of us to take his power, to take his love, and to take his glorious, calm, self-controlled thinking and overcome any fear that may be coming up against us in our lives because he wants to use his church to be a strong light in this dark world. So how do we grow in our fearless faith? How do we grow more faithful and less fearful? Number one is this, just to recap, we reject the spirit of fear. Number two, we embrace God's spirit of power and love and a sound mind. So here's the bottom line truth I want to share with you today. The wise words of A.W. Tozer, when he said this, it is so compelling. It says this, a scared world needs a fearless church. Come on, let's praise him. Well, a scared world needs a fearless church. A scared world needs a faithful church. A scared world needs a generous church. A scared world needs a serving church. A church that is faithful. A church that is on fire for Jesus and does not give in to the spirit of fear. There should be a stark contrast between how the world reacts and how the church of Jesus Christ reacts when crisis situations come. We will not fear. We choose to live in God's power. We choose to live in God's love. And we choose to walk in a sound mind. Amen? Amen. Would you stand with me, please? Father God, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that we don't have to live in fear. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us the spirit of love and power and a sound mind. And Lord, I just pray for all my brothers and sisters who are here today or who may be tuning in by way of YouTube or Facebook or whatever else. God, that you would not let us live under the bondage of fear. But, Lord, that you would set us free, that we may be confident in who we have believed. We are yours. We are your people. We are your church. And we will not bow down to fear. We will live confidently. We will live under your power and your grace in our lives. And, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name that you would use us. Use us to be a light in our homes. Use us to be a light in our community. Use us to be a light in this dark world. 
Father, I pray that you strengthen each person by the power of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, don't let us live another day uh, wondering and shrinking back and, and being fearful about anything. But Lord, let us place our confidence in you. Lord, we put our hope and our trust in you, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who loves us and gave himself for us. The one who gives us his power, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead also dwells within us. The same one who gives us his power and authority, God. We pray that you would use us to be a light in this dark world. It's in Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, amen. Come on, let's praise him this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We praise you, God.